Welcome, welcome to video tutorial number 11. This is the official Kraken YouTube channel, and we're building the KB5 TT kit bag by bag. We're here on page 28, bag J and block 57. All right guys, jumping into block 57, here we have our tools that we're gonna need. We've got our 3.0 and our 5.0 millimeter hex wrenches. All right, so in this block, we're gonna be mounting our motor to our chassis. We're gonna be using two screws on the bottom and three screws on the, in the back. We're gonna be using blue Loctite on all of these screws. And let's get started. Nate, you're gonna to wanna to take a larger cap head screw. You're gonna to wanna to put a pinch washer on there. So we got the pinch washer right there. It's gonna sit nicely. And then you look here in the back at the transmission. You're gonna go through the transmission plate into the motor and there's one, two, three locations. So again, we put our, we primed it and we put blue Loctite on the, on the engine screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the engine in place just so I have ample force going into here and I'm just not gonna strip any of the threads. Okay, so you're going in, you're gonna tighten it down and once you get to the point where it's tight, I want you to back it off a little. I want you to leave it loose so that when we mount the screws on the bottom, everything aligns up properly, even more, even a little looser than that. You want, to, you want it to have a little bit more movement. Okay. We're gonna put the pinch washer on here and basically do the same thing with the other location. All right, Nate, so what you wanna do is you wanna slide the engine washer onto the screw. Notice that the uh, angled end goes towards the flathead screw. You wanna prime it and put blue Loctite on there. And then here's your two engine mounting locations. We left these back screws loose so that we can uh, set up the, align the holes properly. Now go ahead and screw in this side. So basically now Nate, you wanna snug up the bottom engine screws and both sides. Make sure that the washer aligns into the chassis channel. Now we're gonna flip it over and you're going to tighten these down snug. All right, that's the motor mounted to the chassis plate and the transmission. We're gonna be moving on to installing the throttle and brake servo. Jumping into block 58. This is an optional step. We just wanted to show you guys how to uh, do the installation process, but we're gonna be using our Kraken servo. And Nate, let's get started. Let's go ahead and uh, basically first, we already have them pre-installed, but you'll put your mounting gaskets in. They just slide into place. Next, we're going to prefab our throttle horn. What you want to do is you want to take your small screws and you want to thread them from the bottom going this way so that the threads are facing pointed upwards. He's going to be using a 2.0 millimeter um, driver. Okay, he's got that in. We already pre-assembled the uh, side screw here. It's just basically a cap screw with an M3 nut at the other end. It's captured, so you go ahead and, and you can leave that a little bit loose when installing. Okay, and again, now, uh, ideally you wanna set the servo into place first into the chassis before you can align the servo properly so that you have the right throttle and brake engagement. But for the video, we're gonna go ahead and install that onto here. So I wanna let you guys know that uh, this is just a basic tutorial on how to install the throttle horn onto the servo. Ideally, you would wanna have your radio installed, your battery connected, and have the servo powered, everything powered on. That way the servo centers in the proper location and then you wanna install your throttle and brake linkage onto there. You're still gonna do, need to do some fine tuning and set the endpoints, but like I said, just for a demonstration, uh, this is how, how it goes on uh, initially. Okay, so now do the top. You're gonna wanna use blue thread lock here. Screw that down, use your hand to hold it in place. Okay, now tighten the side. 
Okay, that's all completed. Now we're ready to move on next step. All right, now we're jumping into block 59. So here we're gonna be installing the throttle servo onto the chassis and we're gonna be mounting the throttle linkage. Okay, so we're, we're gonna be installing the throttle servo onto the chassis. You wanna mount it onto the uh, servo mounting positions. You wanna move the throttle linkage out of the way and you wanna make sure that the riding end of the servo is facing towards the front of the car. Now there's a, the uh, servo wire is hanging out the back. You wanna kinda go in at an angle with the backside down first to get the wire out of the way and then it'll drop into place and then you'll feed your wire through the frame um, when the time comes. Now we're gonna go ahead and secure the servo in place. Uh, this uh, again, you're, you're, depending on which servo you use, the hardware will come with the servo, not the kit itself. So you want to get it to the point where, where there's tension up against the uh, servo grommet, and then you want to tighten just a little bit more where the servo grommet starts to collapse, but you want it loose enough to have a little bit of uh, servos able to just move just slightly. go check it out it's in there and you guys can take a look check out the orientation and we're good to go let's move on here in block 60 we're going to be assembling the brake linkage we're going to start out by taking your brake rod you're going to want to um, put on slide on that way you want to slide on your brake lever Next, you wanna use your small dampener. You wanna face the curved end first. There you go. Now you wanna slide your spring on. Okay, so next you're gonna to wanna to put on your adjusting collar. Correct, that's the correct way. And then last, we are gonna secure it in place with your set screw. And what you wanna do is the alignment of this is going to be uh, even here on the back. You may need to fine tune it additionally, but for uh, setting up purposes, we're going to match the adjusting collar with the, bra with the back of the brake rod. This is gonna be a 1.5 millimeter, um, and we're just gonna go ahead and use our screwdriver here for this job. So right here we've primed and put blue thread lock on this set screw. Okay, now slide all the bits. And now we're gonna be threading on your brake pivot. So the way that you want to thread this on here is there's two different sides. So he's gonna have his nub side facing down. So you wanna thread it all the way until the brake rod uh, starts to peek out the other side. You wanna flush here. And again, we're gonna adjust the fit once it's on the car, but this is a good starting position. The good thing about this setup is once the brake, brake linkage is on the car, you can actually just adjust it while it's on the car with the collar on the back. Okay, now slide your brass bushing into place. Just like so. Take a look. Let's move on to the next step. All right, now we're tackling block 61. So now in block 61, we're going to be uh, installing the brake linkage onto the car. Now what you wanna do is slide the brake lever into the brake camshaft. There's a hole in there. And we should just slide right in. Okay, now you want to make sure, you wanna take your brake uh, linkage and slide it through the frame and install it onto the servo horn. Slide it down on there. You wanna make sure that the curved end is facing towards the back of the truck and then do the same thing with the throttle linkage. Make sure that the curved end is facing towards the front of the truck. Okay, now you wanna check and see that both of your throttle and brake linkages are um, basically almost parallel. You want a, a 90 degree angle here. How's that look? Looks good. So this is what our brake servo should look like and we can move on to the next part. Okay, now we can work on block 62. Let's use our set screw and we're going to secure the brake lever in place. 
We want to use a primer and blue thread lock here. So what you're looking for is you can, this thing is adjustable, you can slide it in and out, but what we're looking for is we're looking for that um, 90 degree parallel. So we just want just a hair hanging out the end and then we'll secure it and tighten it down from the top. So the set screw is going to go ahead and screw in right here on the top so that we can get the lever in place. All right, now that's good, we can move on to the next step. Okay, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna secure throttle and brake linkages onto the servo horn. We're gonna use our M3 lock nuts. We go ahead and thread those on, nylon and up. You can use whatever tool you got at home. You can use wrench, crescent wrench. We have this nifty RC T-tool here that we're gonna use. What you wanna do is you wanna hold the servo horn with one hand and you wanna tighten it down with the other so that it doesn't spin your servo. You just wanna get it snug on there. There you go. Looks good. Next one. Give everything a little move around. Looks good. Now we can move on to the next block. All right guys, welcome into block 63. Here we're gonna be building our center drive shaft. So here we're gonna take our center drive shaft and we're gonna go ahead and slide, slide the pin into here. We wanna make sure that this bevel is facing outwards. So if we do it like so, because we want the set screw to be able to inlay on that bezel right there. We wanna be absolutely sure that we prime and Loctite not only the threads of the center drive shaft, but also the set screw here bevel end is facing outward so that the set screw captures into the pin and tighten it down. Okay guys, remember you want to use red, red thread locker here. You do not want this pin coming out. It'll ruin your day and you'll lose all drive to your front or the rear of your car. Okay guys, so really, really important here. We want to get a proper amount of torque onto our set screw that holds the pin in place. So what we did was we grabbed another T-wrench, we slid it through the eye hole of the center drive shaft. And what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a T-wrench to get enough torque and we're gonna tighten while holding this side in place. So once you get it to snug, you wanna go even further. You, you really wanna get the set screw nice and tight. You don't want it coming out. All right, so for this other side, we're basically just gonna reuse the same procedure here. Slide the pin in, make sure that the bezel is on the outside so that we have space for our set screw. Make sure to prime and thread lock with red Loctite. Uh, this set screw right here, and then we can screw it in. Okay guys, I got a little pro tip for you here. In order to get the proper amount of torque on the other side, since we don't have an eyelet hole it, to use our T-wrench through, is I'm gonna use a crescent wrench. I open up to the proper diameter and I slide it in there like that to hold it in place. And then Nate's gonna go ahead and tighten that side. So this right here is our finished center drive shaft. We wanna make sure that we absolutely have enough torque on the set screws so that none of the pins fall out and that your bashing day won't be ruined. And this looks good, we can move on to the next block. Now we can head on into block 64. All right guys, this is a uh, really exciting part of the build. We're gonna be mating the whole front section that we built to the center section and we're gonna be uh, connecting them and, and putting in place the drive shaft. I got a little trip, I got a little trick for you guys, for any tip of the day. We're gonna use a tire to lift the center chassis up off the ground so we can mount the front section. Just grab one from your kit, set it down, sen center the assembly in the middle of the tire so that it doesn't wobble. There you go, just like that. Okay, we're gonna slide the drive shaft, kind of go at an angle, go in low. We want the drive shaft to sit under the frame brace. Okay, we got that in place, now we're going to mount the front section. What you want to do is you want to make sure that the drive cup lines up and slides into place. So now that we got that sitting correctly in its spot, we're going to attach everything. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to secure the front section in place with our button head 5x25 screw. And what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to pivot the uh, whole assembly over so that we can mount the bottom screws in place. 
Guys, there's, there's no need for any thread locker here because there is, again, a nylon nut at the bottom which is gonna capture the screw, hold it in place. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and attach the uh, servo arm onto uh, servo horn and we're gonna be using, there's two holes at the end. Use the first one closer to the car. Okay, so you guys wanna go ahead and primer and blue thread lock the screw, okay? Now we're going to flip the car over and secure the steering swing arm set into place. Okay guys, we're gonna tighten up the steering bell crank system into place. What you wanna do is primer and blue thread lock your screw and line up one side first, screw that down. On this last screw, we're gonna go ahead and use a wrench just to make sure that we hold this in place so we can screw it nicely and get the right amount of torque. And we can do the same thing on the other side here. Now flip it back over and we'll tighten the top. Okay, so now we have it flipped back over and we're gonna go ahead and finish tightening this brace screw right here. All right, guys, we made it. We are now on the last block of this bag. What do we got, Randy? In this section, we are going to be mounting up the front bumper and securing the rest of the front end in place. So what we want to do to start is we're going to get uh, our bumper pieces mounted to the front of our bumper. So we're going to go ahead and use the smaller bumper on the lower end and then the bigger on the upper end. Okay, now use the hardware and secure it in place. This is going into plastic so there's no need for any thread lock. So right here we've got our completed bumper assembly. Now Randy, go ahead and tell us about these parts right here. Oh, one of our super cool, one of our awesome upgrade parts. We got our billet hard anodized front bumper replacement parts. These things are CNC milled and add excellent strength to the front of your rig. They mount onto the front section of your stock bumper right in place with the supplied hardware. They add just that extra layer of style and protection to the front of your car. These things are rock solid and uh, I think you really like them. So now we're gonna go ahead and mount this bumper assembly with this hinge pin right here. This goes onto the front of the car. You can go ahead and lay this onto the chassis right here. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that the bumper brace slides nicely into the hole there. And then we can go ahead and just put the rod through here and link everything up. Sometimes if you're having trouble lining up the holes, basically what you do is you just take a tool and on the other end, you can slide it in here and you can align them so that you can slide the hinge pin in. Okay, so the next step is you wanna take your button head screws, you wanna primer them, you wanna hit them with the blue Loctite and then you want to secure from both sides. Now let's go on to securing the bottom bumper into place. We're gonna to wanna to use our button head screws with primer and blue Loctite and secure the front section down. So here, 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 and here. Make sure that these line up and you do not strip them while screwing them in. If it doesn't go in easy, back it off and you can look down here and you can just check the brace and make sure that everything is lining up. So we're good here. I'm gonna leave this one just a little bit loose and I'm gonna go caddy corner over here. I'm gonna go on this side. And again, I can feel the threads going down in there smoothly. So once I have all four screws in place, I'm gonna start tightening and I'm gonna go in a crosshatch pattern. I'm gonna go bottom left, top right, bottom right, and then top left. Okay, now we can lay the bumper right over top and you're going, no need for thread lock on those, those go into plastic. Now screw them down in there and leave them just a hair loose and then we'll torque at the end. So if you over tighten these, what you're gonna do is you're gonna strip out your diff case and then you're gonna have to disassemble the whole front section. So here, you really wanna make sure that you go slow and you don't over tighten. You just want them barely to be smooth right here and that's tight enough. None of them are loose and we didn't over tighten them. So we're good to go and we can flip this thing back over and check our work. 
All right, take a look at what we have here. We have the front section put on. We got the motor installed. We got the transmission on. We got the servo set up. It's really looking like something now. We invested all that time threading each part in. We put all the gears together, took the time to put the oil in, and this is the fruits of our labor so far. And uh, we're really excited what's coming next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned. In our next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and start our work on the rear section. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of our next release. See you later.